know. I mean, we know that she, she has time travel. She knows how to do it um, with the machines. And, I mean, the Daleks have had their own time machines or time bridges. I mean, there's, there's more than one way to travel in time besides the Vortex manipulators that, like, Captain Jack had yeah. and the time agency has and um, the TARDISes. Now, now, do we think that River is the girl, the regenerating girl, or is that still up in the air? I, I, th I still think it's a red herring. Okay, yeah. Even with them th doing the flashbacks to the to the girl? I still didn't feel like it was River because... I, I think it's absolutely her. Really? Yeah. I feel like it's not. I think they're trying to introduce a new element that's going to stick around for a while, even past Moffat's run. Yeah, no, see, I, I really hope it isn't because I still want the Return of the Time Lords. It seems like it'd be too predictable. It's too obvious. Yeah. Or at least to me. I mean, there's a chance that, I mean, Clayton has hit it right on the, right, you know. The nail right on the head. Exactly. And it may not be a big red herring. I, I think the fact that I want it to be a red herring, you know, is what's ju judging or clouding my judgment on, on the issue. Um, I just find it would to be see. too predictable, too, too, like you said, obvious. Yeah. Which I got to say now, I really don't know who's in the space suit. I think it's likely that... Uh, we're going to get the Time Lords back at some point. Whenever it is that Moffat gets off the show, they're going to bring in someone else who's going to be a fan of like the whole Baker mm -hmm. era. He's going to say, we really need to bring back all of these old Time Lords. But as things sit right now, I don't think we're going to see it again. Well, I, I would say when we... This is me jumping ahead. Um, we're, I don't think we're going to lose Moffat until after the anniversary. Yeah, I think it's going to be a while. Um, I think we're going to get the Time Lords back during the anniversary. You think? Yeah. Now, another question I have, I saw this online, is, you know, what kind of weapon are they turning River Song into, you know, to destroy the Doctor? Is oh. it, my idea is maybe she could be there to seduce him, make him fall in love, and then destroy him no, from I mean, his vulnerability. No, it, it's obvious. They've turned into the perfect killing machine. I mean, look at what she did to the silence. Mm -hmm. True. I mean, she obliterated the silence. Look at what she did to the dialect. And I never saw it. Oh, that that was the season finale of last season. He, she's the the dialect um, was face to face with River, and the dialect says, "You're a companion of the Doctor. You're not going to hurt me." She says, "My name's River Song. Look it up." And then the dialect freaks out. Okay. I mean, I think they turned her into the perfect killing machine. Because no matter what situations she's got into, when it involves weapons and violence, she always comes through it unscathed. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, and I think that's 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 where it, it lies. And half the reason why I think the next episode is called, you know... Let's kill um, Hitler! Let's kill Hitler Should is... Should be, let's kill Rory! I yeah. mean... But, I mean, if you want to turn somebody into a perfect killing machine or want to know just what war's like, down and dirty, throw them the World War II. Yeah. You know, have them experience that. Mm -hmm. Now, what I is I mean, it, that's just speculation. What is it... Do we still not know why the Doctor and River are going opposite ways? Yeah, it? it's just... I mean, why do we meet anybody and what order we meet them True. in? True. Okay. I mean, they're time travelers, so not only do you have one person's linear timeline going one way, you have the other ones going the other, and it's just the way the story is. I okay. mean, I think it's it adds to the greatness of the love story that's there. Yeah. Do, are they... Do you get married? Or? Well, actually, I could actually buy it now, possibly, because he thinks that humans are icky, but she's a... She has Tumblr DNA, so she's not strictly human. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, he would not be as repulsed by her now as he would for a full-fledged human. Yeah, because during their conversation that was pretty, you know, just staring into the eyes and, and, you know, him saying something and her going, yeah, you know, it made me kind of wonder. Mm -hmm. I picked up some of the parts, you know, you yeah. know the kissy-kissy, you know. And yeah. really, what's, what's a better justification for a love story than not being as repulsed by someone as you ever were before? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, because, I mean... In the past, I mean, the only other person he really showed that he had any real love or any sort of relationship or even hinted that there was a off-screen re re relationship with was Ramona. Ramona, sorry. Um, in Classic, it was Baker. Okay. Um, there were hints. I mean, so I, it seems that 
they, you know, there could be something strange about the race where they could only mate with their own species. Okay. Or something less strange in that they just don't want to mate with anything else. <laughs> or they don't want to cause anybody else to, you know, have the genetic disposition with whatever Time Lord DNA does to something. Okay. Um, and yes, her being able to be a Time Lord by how she was conceived is quite possible because they turned themselves into what they were because of that. They did say it took time. I don't think it took as much time as the doctor is saying. Um, it, it, I think it happened a lot quicker. And maybe the exposure that Amy's had yeah, and well, Rory could have enhanced the... Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, that that's what they're getting at, that it, she got infected with the time head. Why? <laughs> I mean, she was conceived on the TARDIS Why they were traveling through time. Yeah. Which, I mean... Yeah. Infected by yeah. the time head. That's one way of putting yeah. it. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and also, you know, she she was exposed to the crack. Yeah. God, this is sounding dirty right now. But, I mean, there's a lot there that nobody else has ever been exposed to on the TARDIS. God, that sounds horrible. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I think this goes all the way back to Classic Who, back to the Three Doctors sort of era, where, you know, we find out more about the Time Lords. How they got the technology and stuff. Seriously. Who hasn't been in the TARDIS? Me. We, we haven't. But I mean, you gotta look at it like this. Who? How many people have actually had sex in the TARDIS? Yes, that's the dirty joke I was making. Oh, actually the sad thing is, is... Unless I go back and check stuff, there's only been two couples, I would guess, that have had sex in the TARDIS. Name them. The Doctor and Romana. Okay. And Amy and Rory. Okay. I mean, I really don't think it's happened with any other companions, or at least, or companions with companions, it's never been hinted at. And of course, it never would have been hidden at in the, in the earlier episodes. I could see anything from Baker, Baker on, but it never really was ever uh, broached in any form or fashion. So, any other questions, comments? I think your cat's trying to make the TARDIS noise. Yeah, that's just the way she breathes. Any other speculation? Speak. What? Speak. You speak. No, we go from right to left, so it's your go. Yeah. You know you could break the chain. You could break the chain. I'm good right now. Any, any speculation about who's in the spacesuit? Uh, not for that one. I don't really feel like it could be River. It just it would seem too obvious for me. I think, uh, I think it's got to be River. In the suit now? Yeah. There was another point I had to make, but I have no idea what it could be now. Um. Any any other speculations? Who you think? Because you, you said it's River. Any anything else you want to speculate on for the second half of the season? Well, I'm trying to think of who it is who could kill Hitler, and I'm thinking it's River, but I kind of want it to be Rory, just because. Yeah, but I don't know <laughs> if we're going to have them in the in the TARDIS, because um, honestly, right now, I don't know who's in the spacesuit, and, but I did go back and watch the season six trailer, and I cannot wait for the creepy dollhouse episode. Oh, with the puppets and shit? Yeah. Oh, that's, I knew that was going to creep me out, because I watched it, and I was like, oh no. It's like child's play all over again. I'm gonna end up sleeping with my overhead light on for the next four years. Yes, yeah, so like her with the silence. Or not the silence, with the blinking angels. Or, oh my god, the weeping angels. The weeping angels didn't freak me out. Silence is just creepy ass looking, and if I ever see something remotely resembling them hanging from my ceiling, I'm pretty sure. Damn, you're never gonna be able to go to Dragon Con then. <laughs> I do think it's interesting. Will they be hanging from my, my hotel room ceiling at Dragon Con? Yeah, yes, never know. Nests and clumps. Yeah. Because it's Dragon Con. Yeah. But I, one of the things that I think is interesting is an idea I've seen kicked around that the silence is not exactly a mastermind species. <laughs> I, I, I have to agree to on that. Yeah, that instead they're just, they're just sort of the harbingers of something a little bit more important. Something that actually has um, some idea how to build to, um, build its own technology. 
Yeah. Well, I'm curious if the Sons are going to make a, a reappearance in the Hitler episode. Because I can almost see them being in that episode. I'd love to see the silen silence in Nazi uniforms. <laughs> oh! The, the thing that I think is really going to be important is uh, River's TARDIS. I don't think that's her TARDIS. Well, she just kind of made a big... Well, I, I don't. I don't believe it's even a proper TARDIS. I think that it's essentially going to be a knockoff. See, I think. I mean, yeah, it, it very well could be a knockoff. The the silence sort of try to piece them all together, but I really think that just with the coloring and the design and the feel for it, it really feels like either the Master's TARDIS or the Ronnie's TARDIS. I mean, if you go back and look. At, at the Classic Who episodes. I mean, that's that's just how I feel. And I think it would be great if we, you know, finally did ever, we finally did find out what happened to the Master's TARDIS because that actually has been a big question. Because at one point I actually thought with Torchwood, and this isn't spoiling anything, I really thought that the Torchwood um, headquarters that they were using for Jack's team was actually a TARDIS. Because okay. every once in a while it made a weird noise that sounded like a TARDIS. And since they and it seemed like infinite on the inside, um, I was hoping that was going to be the TARDIS. But when they blew the thing up, I mean, it just it, it didn't feel that it could be. So I mean, I would like to know what happened to the Master's TARDIS or what happened to the Ronnie's TARDIS because honestly, I, I would never see the Ronnie going back and fighting in the Time War because she she would have nothing at stake. There would be no reason for it. The Master. I, kind of could see because he's just that type of individual and plus they probably promised him new regenerations if he came and fight for us so I mean I could see him having a stake in all of it I just don't see her if I have any suggestion to make for any of the uh, Doctor Who fans who are watching this all 12 of them what I would really suggest we're up to, to about them, 30 now oh neat yeah but what I'd really suggest to them would be to uh, just every time a new female character comes on Point at the screen, shout to your friends, she is Romana. I can tell. Because on a long enough timeline, you're going to be right. And yeah. when that day comes, everyone will go, oh, wow, you are so clever. Or you can also shout out that it's Donna, uh, the oh, doctor's Donna. mother, or the Ronnie. That also works really well, too. Or Sarah. No, Susan. 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 Wait, who's Sarah? Uh, Sarah Jane Smith? No, the other one. There isn't another one. There's another one. You know so what I found? Tired. Yeah, I understand. Someone told me Torchwood in the first season, Jack makes a very awkward face. That's just predominantly awkward. Is this true? He makes an awkward face? Like a really super awkward face. I would have to see it again. Um, that entire season's awkward to me. Okay. Um, but that's a, that's a discussion for another time. Um, anything else you want to say about this episode before you wrap this I'm thing going up? Through, going, to be going through so much withdrawal. Well, I mean, the exciting thing about next week is we're going to need a little bit more time to do it because um, it's going to be a two-hour episode. But you guys are going to get exposed to uh, the five doctors. Sweet. So not only will you get a taste of technically four of the doctors because Baker was Baker. Um, those of you who know Classic Who know what I'm referring about. Um, but you get a bunch of the companions, tastes of them, you get tastes of the first f of five of the f doctors, oh. and even though Hartnell wasn't in that episode because he was dead, the guy Isn't they got the to play that... him okay. uh, does, a, does a damn good job playing the grumpy, crotchety uh, doctor okay. um, that he was sort of like during uh, the first season of Doctor Who. You just say grumpy? Grumpity, yeah. Okay, cool. Yep. So until next time, uh, this is Galaxy... Gallifrey Pirate uh, Radio! Signing out.